Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 248 for Monday, March 16th, 2020. Greetings, folks, and welcome to or back to Gig Gap, depending on your personal scenario. Either is fine. We don't judge. We are the show for uh, working musicians. Like I said, you know, uh, by, for, and about even working musicians. All right, here in Durham, New Hampshire, hunkered down, I'm Dave Hamilton. And quarantine in San Jose, California. It's Paul Kent. Yeah, man. Yeah. You, uh, it, it, I, I say that I'm hunkered down. You say that you're quarantined at the moment. We and our families are all uh, on the surface healthy, though. I think I'm I'm saying that accurately. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. That's self maybe self quarantine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to make sure nobody. You don't have to worry about us yet. So we're 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 yeah. we're good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, plus we're all. I mean, we're we're not in the risk pool of any of this. So, I had a great gig. Not this weekend, <laughs> but the prior weekend before. I mentioned we had uh, when we did the show last week with Mike. Um, about Iamito, uh, that I had a great gig the Friday before that we were going to have to defer talking about. And uh, sure enough, man, like it, it was one of these, it was an acoustic monkey fist gig at Old Rail Pizza in Summersworth, which has quickly become our favorite place to play. The, the people there, it's a, I mean, it's a pizza joint. It, there, there are tables there for people to eat and they do. There's a bar there for people to eat and, and drink as they do. And then there's, you know, takeout traffic that's constantly coming through the door uh, as well. And for whatever reason, the vibe of this place is always like I'm playing in someone's living room. It doesn't look like a living room. It looks like a, you know, a, a restaurant. Uh, but man, everybody there is... Like the vibe is such that everybody communicates with everybody else. There's like everybody at every table is talking to everybody else, certainly, especially by the end of the night. Um, and it, it it's just such a good little scene. People are constantly throwing up requests. It's very much an everyone in it for the fun of everyone else scenario. So we were constantly taking chances and playing things we never would like even consider playing like. When somebody requests REO Speedwagon, you turn that down because you're a smart musician, right? But not <laughs> at this club. We And we just play, you know, we'll play anything. It doesn't matter. Uh, and it, we, it does matter. We try to sound good, you know, 85% of the time. But but we can we can take that 15% and go in any direction as long as the crowd is, you know, into it, which is sort of the whole point uh, of these kinds of gigs. And this one was interesting because, I don't know, about halfway through we kind of noticed we're like we had to start late which we've never had to do there and it, it's just because the place where we're usually set up has tables in it now normally we and the staff are um i don't want to say aggressive but we are attentive to making sure that as those tables get cleared you know we start at 7 30 so if one of those tables gets cleared and it's 6 45 we go and like commandeer it so that we we don't lose it we usually get there about six we have pizza before we play and uh, so we're always there to kind of do that and for whatever reason this time none of us were paying attention at the right moments and it would, we'd realize oh crap there's somebody at that table and uh and so we didn't get started until maybe five after eight which is very late in my opinion for a gig that they were understanding of it for all the obvious reasons, but you know, we weren't all that comfortable, but the last thing that needed to happen, we were waiting for a table of people to kind of clear out so we could play. And it was getting to the point where it was like, maybe we should go say something to them, but you know, they're here for dinner and the club doesn't seem to mind. So it's not our place to, to say, and they kind of realized what was happening and they're like, Oh, it, would it be okay? Like, mm -hmm. can we move our tables so that you guys can start? And it's like, look at that. We didn't have to <laughs> like, but that's the vibe of that place. Cool. And and we noticed that like the, all the regulars that, that we're used to interacting with the people that sort of, you know, dominate the request, um, you know, vibe were not there. I think one of the guys, was, well, anyway, um, 
it and and so it was different people and it turns out a lot of those people are there most of the time anyway they just aren't the loud ones uh but they were able to be the loud ones this time and so i don't know about halfway through the gig johnny d turned to me and he's like it's like we're like wow this is weird you know it's all these different people but it's the same vibe and john's like I'm, maybe it's us <laughs> and i was like oh no, no 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 it's just the place john don't don't yeah. give ourselves too much credit that's right yeah but it was a really fun night harmonies were good uh, playing was good. Everything, the sound was good. It was just, you know, it was, it, it, I love it when a gig just goes so easy like that. And it is, I like, I will take some credit for it as a band, not, not as Dave, but you know, collectively, but it is as much up to us as it is, as it is the people, but, but we get to start that vibe and we certainly could ruin that vibe if we, if we did not play it properly too. So there's, well, what's cool is when you when it's both of you, right? Like right. You've, you've put in the time with past performances and helped kind of create the vibe that people are looking forward to feeling that thing again when they get there to see you, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it's it's a two-way street. I would say that Totally. I would say, you know, our Charlie's gigs as a band are kind of that way. It's it's that's our home base club. It has a similar vibe almost every time we play. Um and you know, we did a smart thing years ago where we stopped playing that club in the summertime because it's an early start and it's, and it's light out until eight thirty nine. And there's so many free things going on during the day that it just, you know, wasn't possible to have that draw during the summer. So let's just don't do it. Just do what we can to protect the sure. times we do play there to be, to be special. And we so do the same thing I, with old rail. It's exactly the same. We don't play in the summer. Yeah, I think people go to the beach. You got to just pat yourself on the back. If you figure out the right combination, cause there's a zillion variables, right? So totally. you know, what time do you start? <laughs> what song do you start with? How do you, how do you make that connection with the crowd and how do you maintain that connection with the crowd? And, and you know, how did, how well are you at reading that particular crowd? Yeah. And so it's, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a, it's a partnership of success. You know what, you know what it, p- part of it might be. And again, like you don't know what factors are the ones that matter. You just, it's like, like the old joke about advertising. I think it was somebody at Ogilvy said, you know, I, I wish we knew which 50, we know 50% of our advertising works. We just don't know which 50%. So um, but, uh, and, and of course people have now spent careers trying to figure that out and they still fail, but that's a different podcast. Uh, it, one thing at that, at that place that I've never really thought about before is most of the tables are high tops. There are a few low tops sort of up close to the area where the stage is, but the rest of the place and the bar is all, you know, high top kind of seating. And I wonder if having people, it's, you know, having their heads uh, basically equal to where our heads are as we are standing. There's no stage per se. It's just an area. So we're standing on the floor of the, the club. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I wonder if that fosters more of a vibe of equality and interaction. Like they they don't feel like they're speaking up to us. They're just speaking with us. And and it's great. I don't I certainly don't want to discourage whatever it is. But I never thought about that before. You just said this. And I was like, oh, I wonder if the like that particular factor here makes a difference. Where and that's serendipity, right? That's just yeah. That, you know, oh, totally. Yeah. You yeah. Know, good good fortune that the layout of the club is adding to what is adding to what you guys do. Yes, but, you know, exactly. When you get a place like that, you know, where it it ticks all the boxes. It's like fulfilling for audience and performer. You probably get paid. You probably get tipped pretty well there. Yep. You know, it's, it, you know, it's just one of those things where everybody's happy with the arrangement. It, everybody's happy. That's the thing. It, 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 it's, it's exactly what it should be. We walk in there excited to play. We leave there happy that we played. The, the staff cl- is excited to see you because they're going to make some money. That the, night. It's bo- It's a two way street there. They love yeah. it. And, you know, both before, during and after. And the crowd loves it the whole time. There's nobody that's upset about this. No, there's no weirdness about, well, I guess, you know, even though there was nobody here, we still got to make sure they pay us. And like, there's not that, you know, that, right. that's n- there's no weirdness. Um which is great. It's, it's like a grown up thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. And I, and I think that's, that was sort of the vibe that I wanted to start here is just like, these things do still exist, or at least they did. And now we'll be on, there for us when we get on the other side. You got it. That's it. So speaking of this, you know, um, I, I we were talking pre-show I've had, I had an, in, I was going to take half of a theater gig uh, next month that sh- entire show has been canceled um, and now the theater is closed, but the, the plan was they were going to just extend the 
current show that I'm not playing uh, instead of doing this other one so that it didn't have to like mount a new show and pay rights and more risk and all that stuff. Uh, now the theater's closed, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Yeah. Um, but, um, and then I had another gig. I had a bitter pill gig coming up this weekend, this Friday night that was canceled uh, as well, as well as several bitter pill gigs in early April that, that are now, um, you know, at least on hold if, if not canceled entirely. And I think you, you had, you had the, our gigs were all, well, my gigs and, and you know, the bitter pill gig. So our gigs and then the theater gig were all canceled by parties other than me. But you, you did an interesting thing this weekend. You canceled the gig. Well, so we actually um, had a rehearsal and I sent out a note to the guys like, Hey, this is getting kind of, so this is Tuesday. Um, this is getting kind of weird. Is everybody comfortable? We should have the conversation. Are you guys yes. all comfortable playing a gig? Smart leader. And, uh, yeah. Easily, easily two thirds of the band were very comfortable. Nobody was in fact uncomfortable at the time. But then um, after the Oval Office presentation, and clearly there was an amping of attention to this, I re-polled the guys on Thursday. Right. So I think that was Wednesday night. And, uh, and yeah, it, it had turned significantly. And there were a couple of guys who absolutely did not want to play. A couple of guys that would go with whatever the group decided. Sure. Uh, and uh, But enough of us were, did not want to play. And I kind of had a sense. I didn't want to be that guy playing a gig, acting like nothing was going on. Right. And so I called the owner of the club that we play, which is the Charlie's, the, the local club. And, you know, it was an interesting conversation because he was incredibly empathetic. He was like, I, you know, I totally get it. I said, and I asked him, you know, are you going to shut down as well? And he said, you know, I, I really cannot afford to go a weekend with nothing. So I'll put a DJ on. Please tell people, you know, that we're still open. So I went ahead and said the house rockers out of concern for our, fans and family members and friends, you know, we're going to, we're going to pull the plug on this one. And I got over, you know, I got a lot of interaction on, it was a Facebook post and I sent it out as an email as well. And I got overwhelmingly positive interaction about that. Yeah. But, you know, I was, I, you know, from a, the, the, the little bit of PR chops that I have, you know, just kind of saw like, do you really want to be there? Hey, come, come out and have a sweaty night dancing on top of a bunch of strangers. You know, when this is going on, I kind of saw that it was, it was not the right message to be sending. And it's just better to, you know, show care and concern for your fan base. And so that kind of carried the day. The band was fine. And then after that, everything started canceling and, you know, right. the messages coming from state government about gatherings over 50. Now it's no live entertainment, no, no wineries, no nightclubs. And so it went all, it, all, it went downhill really quick in a lot of gigs. So I, I lost two gigs last weekend. One canceled on me before I could get to them. And then this one is the one that we, I pulled the plug on. And then, you know, there's a bunch coming up and I'll tell you, Dave, I, I think, I think it's going to be a while. I mean, my, my perspective on this is that, the testing is going to ramp up and, you know, we're going to have two weeks of getting good numbers and then those numbers are going to come in. So that's two weeks where things are absolutely shutting down. And then those numbers are going to come in and they're going to be, I think, pretty substantial. Yep. And then there's going to be more drastic measures done for at least another month. So, I, you know, I'm thinking at least the month of April is yeah. going to get lost. And then maybe if we're lucky, if, if it's not longer and if it's not worse, I mean, if everybody has has done their part to kind of help get our hands around this, this whole social distancing stuff. Maybe we get back to business in May. I doubt it, but maybe we do. But even then I think, you know, people are going to be kind of shy about it. They're going to be a little concerned for a while. So I agree, you know, yeah, no. And I but think, gosh, I feel for those small businesses that are going to have to find their way. I feel for my fellow musicians. I mean, Simon is one of my best friends in the world. I love him to death. He makes part of his income on gigging, teaching, gigging, whatever he can do. He was pretty smart. He jumped right on doing um, like a live busking session on Facebook Live. And he had some pretty good traffic. He made a little bit of money, you know, not enough to totally replace a gig. But, but, but uh, better than zero, which is what yeah. which is what it had been reduced to by having but the gig The thing canceled. that I observed yeah. from that, I mean, you checked in on that a little bit, didn't you? One, he did two in a row. Did you do both of them or just one of them? Uh, I, I think I did just the first one. I And yeah. it was great. I, I It was th the nice part for us here is that, the weather has gotten a little bit warmer. It's mid-March. So like 
we've had a day in the 70s, but that's a little rare. It's mostly like we're in the 50s in the middle of the day, which means we can be outside, which is way better than if that's this cool. had been the case a month ago for us or yeah. you know, worse for somebody like folks in Canada where it's not quite that way yet in other places around the world. But um, thing so that was I, interesting. I was on my Simon's, deck and I watched it while I was grilling. So that's pretty it was, cool. It was great. And, and yeah. On behalf of him. Thank you for doing that. Um, you know, the, the nice comments that like, yeah, this is kind of crazy, but a little bit of, you know, seeing my friends play music is really meaningful to me. I thought that was really beautiful. I mean, yeah. he got really nice comments, really good support and uh, good for him. I mean, he does a good job with it. And, you know, he, he's, uh, um, you know, he's just a guy trying to make a life by playing and teaching music. So, you know, why wouldn't people support them? Yeah. I will tell you something interesting that that's on my mind is I'm that conversation with the owner at Charlie's has really been ringing in my mind. And I'm trying to think about when we do get back there. Yes. All musicians are losing money, but the clubs are losing money as well. Sure. And, and I'm wondering whether there's something we can do creative and, you know, I'd love your thoughts on this. Like we're usually a $10 cover. Should I do a $15 cover and we get the door there? Should I do a $15 cover and give five bucks back to him? I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, he wouldn't take charity. And so that's not the question there. Right. But, um, you know, how can we, besides just saying, hey, we're back open for business, everybody come out and support the local businesses. My, my really good friend, Paul Keller had said, you know, every time this week where you know you would have gone out to do something, put that money aside and get ready to spend it on, you know, local businesses and local musicians when it's time to do that again. So just, you know, let's, we're going to have to help people make up. I'd like to be part of that solution. I don't know. Have you given any thought to things like that? Yeah, I've, I've, I haven't done anything specific yet, but you know, I'm, I'm as a business owner, I'm well aware of how important cash flow is. Yeah. So the idea, I, and it's not my idea, I've seen other people propose it, but I, it, the idea of buying gift certificates for your favorite places really resonates with me because it helps to give them that cash flow now. For to buy when, the gift card now yeah. and get ready to go out later. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were going to go pay a cover somewhere, buy a 10 or $20 gift card every time you were thinking about doing that. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and like we just recorded that album with Bitter Pill, we're in the mixing process. It just so happens that one of the songs on it is called Desperate Times. Uh, These are Desperate Times is the way the chorus goes. And uh, and and the name of the album was proposed and still is to be Desperate Times on the New Hampshire state line. So it fits. And Bitter Pill is it, like the like the vibe of Bitter Pill is very much a uh, uh, sorry way to say this. Uh there's there's a morbidity to to everything that Bitter Pill does. So so this fits with with that particular band and and that particular band's vibe and sense of humor and, and you know, all of that stuff. But, uh, you know, we've now had three gigs canceled and those gigs were the money from those gigs was, you know, to pay for more mixing and, and finally able to release mm-hmm. the album. And so Billy very quickly changed course. We mixed the song Desperate Times. We've released that. And then uh, we've he's we slash he has put out the pre-order for the record uh, so that people can. Again, it's that, you know, if you want to support the process of this here, you, here's your opportunity to buy this before we actually you know can deliver the product and and help to promote it and, and all of that, which is really good. You know, it as often happens in many bands, you know, I've, I've often said one of the most beautiful things about playing music is that it allows people of different socioeconomic scenarios to interact with each other. Right. And, and so that band is not unlike any other band I plan where some folks are absolutely financially stable without the band income. And some folks very much rely on it as part of their overall, you know, income structure. And, and so I'm glad to see that happening with that band. So I'll put a link to that up there too. And you can, you folks can hear it. Yeah. But it, you know, it does like you're the, the, you're bringing up what Simon did with his performance, you know, on Facebook live and, and this recording stuff. And of course fling we've, we've been doing with the bitter pill record. We all went to a studio here, the noise floor and recorded it fling. We've been, as I mentioned, recording, 
essentially in isolation. We do get together and sort of work through stuff, but we're all recording our parts in our own home studios and then blending them together and mixing them together. Now, of course, we seem like like geniuses for for having <laughs> sort of cleared the gig schedule for the for the spring and and uh, and done all this. Uh, obviously, we we didn't know we're, we're idiots, just like everybody else. But um, but the timing has worked out because now I've got my home studio set up in a way that it's really e like if I have an idea about a drum track or whatever, I can just sit down and immediately I'm recording. There's no, you know, setup or anything because I've already been through that and and having all that. So, you know, there there are opportunities here. It's I don't want to say that it's perfect uh, because it's not. I don't want to say that we're all going to be able to replace that income that we would have otherwise had, you know, at a hundred percent because we're not, but there will be some people that make more money playing music nowadays because they, they aren't just sitting there saying, I'm waiting for someone else to do something. It's, you know, I'm going to go out, I'm going to pave away. Sure. Simon's first gig on Facebook live didn't make him the money that he might've made at, or would have made at a, you know, gig that, that had been canceled that night. But I bet if he does this, you know, a couple times a week for several weeks in a row, it's going to like he'll build up a little bit of following and, you know, well, an yeah. online following. So, I mean, it Absolutely. takes it takes some it will take some effort. It takes some innovation, uh, not not that he's reinventing the wheel or anything, but he's just doing it and, and grinding it out. That's how we do what we do. And just because well, we can't go to clubs doesn't mean we can't I grind agree. it out. Right. We're still musicians. Right. That's it. So, yeah. And this kind of forces people to get their hands around some of the digital tools and kind of learn how to innovate and and find different ways to do things. You know, it, it is a good reminder of a few things. One, it's a good reminder that it's life is not black and white. There are shades of gray. And in that shades of gray are the opportunities. If you just say everything's everything's great or everything's bad. And right now everything's bad. Yeah, you're going to wither. Right. But right. <laughs> if you, you know, if you use the, you know, self quarantining time to get better at your instrument, get better at your singing, you know, whatever it may be, um, get better at your technical skills, which is a part of the modern musician's tool bag. Right. Well, that's, I mean, it's that's just, right. Yep. Right. So I, I, I need mean, to get better at that. And I'm a geek. Like if I, I thought, <laughs> well, I thought about, you know, we. We as Fling, at least this past week, were comfortable getting the five of us together in a room here to play. I can't predict whether that will be the case in future weeks, but let's just say that it is for the sake of argument. And what if we spent, you know, two hours of our rehearsal time kind of going through the stuff that we would normally go through? And then yeah. the last 30 minutes, what if we did a live stream from here and played folks some of the tunes we're working on or, you know, whatever? Why, why not? And then I thought, well, wait a minute. I'm the one that everybody in the band is going to look to to make that happen. And <laughs> I I mean, I, I know like conceptually what to do. And I probably have every bit of hardware here that I need. So I better get my game on here and figure out how to do this so that if we want to do it, we can just do it without it having to be a thing, you know. And uh, so I'll, I'll share with you where my so head there went. There you go. I'm yeah. doing this. Yeah. So Simon. um uh, did this uh, in his living room. And he just, I think he yeah. called it living or living room busking session. It was really casual. And I was thinking to myself, well, this is a thing, you know, what would, what would, what would be great for the attendee experience? And so I was like, okay, quick Google search, photographic backdrops. Oh, yeah. They're like 30 bucks to 80 bucks. Easy thing. Um, lighting, um, you know, 120 bucks. You can have professional lighting for a small room. Oh, I've got a, I've got a better light, like for a one person thing. I have a light that I bought. I think I paid 39 bucks for it. There you and go. I, I use it right. for when I'm on like, um, Leo Laporte sometimes has me on his, you know, Mac break weekly or tech, whatever YouTube shows. And I got to yeah. look good, you know? So I bought this light that lets me adjust brightness and color temperature. And Beautiful. It's, it's great. It's a little panel. I'll put the link in the show. notes. So, brilliant. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And then I, you know, I said like, like you, like I could figure out, how to get a feed out of my mixer into a computer and then to do something. But, you know, really, if you want it to be professional and you want people not to get bored looking at a one camera shoot, how do you do multiple camera shoots? And then That's it. you learn like, you know, there's amazing 4K Zoom as a 4K streaming camera for like 199 bucks. Um, you know, there are black magic makes, um, web stream is like a, a video mixer where yep. it syncs audio to video. And all of a sudden, uh, and actually there are some really good, um, things to learn, you know, bands on YouTube that share how they do it. Like they literally 
you know, there are bands out there that don't want to grind and get club dates. They just want to play music and they want to share it with somebody. And they've been doing this live streaming of their shows as a model for them for a while. Oh, yeah. They're ahead of the game. That's right. They're ahead <laughs> of the game. But they're also there's several out there that are really willing to share yes. um, what gear they use and how they use it. And there's a lot to learn. So, you know, from Simon doing this, you know, really charming one person, one camera shoot. I was like, well, you know, what would what would pro look like, you know, if this is the model that we may have to be doing for eight weeks, 12 weeks, I mean, you know, is there, can you dress it up and make it, you know, um, engage the, engage the viewer in a, in a greater degree with multiple, with multiple cameras and, you know, a, you know, a I think there's a way, professional lighting. I think there's a way to take everybody's iPhone in the room or Android phone maybe, uh, and stream the video from that to to be, so that way you you have at least you know three or four cameras already without having to buy a thing and i haven't figured this out to the you know to production yet but i think that that's going to be doable i think there are options for this so i, I have cool. some ideas i'll leave that on you to figure it out and then here's <laughs> here's a really cool secret sauce that i found that came from one of the tutorials on youtube was that there's a service called restream.io yeah. which you stream to them and they stream to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, a whole bunch of 40 platforms, I think. Uh, so all of a sudden, uh, you're, is that a, is that a good sound or bad? No, sound? that's a good sound. That's a, that's, oh, that's, okay. Dave, that's Dave's <laughs> brain. Like, moving. Sorry, yeah, man. But there's problems with that. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sure there are, but that's okay. Like, you, you know, you just figured out nothing's going to be perfect. And that's the other right. thing to remember that, you know, um, Boy, man, it's really hard not to type restroom.io. I don't know why that is, but the show notes will be right eventually. But, you know, that's the thing is there is no. It's a different service. That's, that's, I'm not interested <laughs> in that right now. Thankfully, I got a show to record. But. <laughs> oh, man. But like, remember that, that there is it. Whatever you come up with it and you could throw zero dollars at this solution or, you know, $10,000 at this solution or anywhere in between. It's you're, you're not going to get to perfection. If I've learned one thing with technology and that's music gear, you know, computer gear, all of it over the years is there's always going to be something that's not exactly perfect. Do not let that stop you. That's the, just yeah. do it anyway, even though it's yeah. not perfect. You know, is everything perfect every time you set up on stage? No, it's just the way it was the last time. And so you're comfortable with it. But this medium it. is very forgiving. It's I mean, that's very the thing. forgiving. Like, it, it, the intimacy yeah. and the reality of it, it doesn't have to be fully produced and all that no. stuff. So what I'm describing, I not. I don't know if it's better than what Simon is doing, whether it's going to get more engagement or, or that type of thing. Right. I mean, people. People life cast and webcast where they stick a phone on top of their head and walk around and people have built YouTube streaming careers on that, that type of stuff. There's more to it than that. And we can certainly spend future episodes just kind of talking about building an audience if you, and, if, and, you know, the challenges. If anybody okay. knows the tech stuff of this, if you've already done it, tell us feedback at giggabpodcast.com. I'm definitely moving down this path. I'm going to figure it out, even if I never do a broadcast, even though I definitely will. Um, but I'd, I'd love to learn more too. Yeah. So, sorry, I interrupted you. What were you, what were you saying there, man? Well, I'm, I'm just simply saying again that, you know, in this time of crisis as a musician, you know, our intense empathy goes out to everybody who's losing livelihood from this for those people who do this as a living. Hmm. Um, it's a tough time. And for those who are weekend warriors and, you know, they do this for pleasure, you know, you're certainly missing out. You're going to lose some gigs. They're never going to come back because whenever the schedule kicks back in, I'm imagining most venues are just going to start from whatever they had booked. You know, if it's May, if it's June, they're just going to start from that point forward. This is a crazy time and crazy things are happening. But, you know, don't go crazy and, you know, innovate your way out of it. You know, find unique ways. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, will there, will they allow 10 person house concerts, that type of thing and keep creating, but using all the tools that are at your disposal, I think is just a smart thing to do. And I, you know, again, I, I give my buddy Simon just a big hug because he was like, well, I got a problem right now. I got to get right out there and start doing something. And he did it. And he, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I personally was moved by the amount of love that he got to like, yeah, I got to sit in my house, you know, that we're supposed to social distance now, what would make this an enjoyable experience? And, oh, that's my buddy, Simon. And, you know, he's putting some beautiful music out there. And, uh, and, uh, he sounded great too. 
He did. And, and, and again, that was just the, the, I think the microphone. No, no, he, he, he had a, a small PA that he plugged his guitar in for a little bit of reverb and yep. a microphone in. And then it was just the microphone on the phone or whatever phone or tablet. And that's what he was using to kind of capture as well. Oh, no kidding. It's not intensely loud. No. So there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of sound pressure issues go, that are going on. Oh, interesting. And it sounded totally fine. I didn't, I thought, man, it, I thought he was feeding that directly in from like a USB mixer or, you know, so, I mean, I knew it was a fairly simple setup, but I did not realize it was just a microphone on his phone. See, there you go. Like it, I'm overthinking it already. Like, oh, I, you can't do <laughs> As it. As you without, are wont to do. Well, I've, I've been, I've been, no, I resemble that remark, Paul. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that like, that's the thing is it's like, don't worry about it. Get it sounding good in the room and let your phone pick it up. And then, and then you're good to go. And I had that streaming at first, like I said, I was on my deck, uh, grilling sausage and, uh, that's not a euphemism. I was actually on my deck <laughs> grilling sausage and I was watching it on my phone. I'm like, well, this is crazy. I had brought, we have one of those Sonos move speakers that I had, it's a portable thing. You know, it's their first and portable and it's outdoor you know, rated and all that great stuff. And uh, and so I had brought that out to listen to other music before I realized that that Simon was there. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is an AirPlay speaker, too. And so I streamed it to that. And I had it. I had Simon blasting on my porch while I was grilling. And it was awesome. And it sounded fantastic. I can't believe it was just his phone microphone. See, these are the things you learn. So there you go. And, yeah. and I put kind of a bow on all this. We're saying in this time of weirdness, the opportunity is to rediscover and, and improve parts of your craft your technical craft, like just, you know, your, your chops, but also, you know, finding ways to add meaning to other people's life, which is why you're a musician in the first place. Right. So if the only method of distributing this is digitally right now, that don't, don't be bitter about it. Yeah. Do it. And you know, you will be in, even if you make one person happy, you probably have improved your day and their day. And you know, that's better than not improving anybody's day. So, so why not? Um, you know, find ways to do it, write a song, you know, sc- get a scratch of a song. I personally am not one that things need to be absolutely perfect. I would rather kind of iteratively kind of share what I'm thinking and get feedback from, from, you know, maybe certain things would be just like you friends, you know, that type of thing. And, um, and then, you know, but like I said, this is, this was experience was one guy in his living room, basically with his phone, getting a lot of love. And how, how good is that? Oh, it's it's great. And we can all do it. Like if you're listening to this show, you almost certainly have the ability to uh, to do that. And and why not? Let's just all and we can all sort of watch each other and promote each other. I mean, if Simon and Simon's not local to me, I've played gigs with Simon when he's been out here. I've played (laughs) him with gigs out there. But the reality is, as a musician, I rarely get the opportunity to just go and watch my friends play. And here I had this opportunity to go and watch my friend play. And Another that, silver lining. that was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So we can all, you know, kind of help each other and 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 do that. So, I'd like to do it with the house rockers. I mean, I think we're still under even if it's a big band, we're still under the legal legal, you know, quantity of people who can gather in one place. Right. So right. Probably right. Do it with 12 people. Right. 10 people in the band. Yeah. You know, maybe a cameraman, you know, maybe someone to press the video mixer and, you know, pick a different, you know, different video angle here. And, you know, so one tech, two technical people in the band. Yeah. I'd like to find some way to do that and just some way to keep people. It it would be fun. That's the way that's the way to approach these. Is it like the first time out the gate is just for fun. Right. To think about it that way, like go and do it. And if it if it if it's not great. You only do two songs instead of 10. Yeah. Like it's fine. Hey, do you, do you mind if I, and, and if you, if you say no, I, it's fine, but everybody will know. No, I'll cut this part out. Um, if I put the, the MP3 for desperate times from, from bitter pill at the end of like at the end of the audio for this episode. Well, I, I, I don't mind that. If you also put a link to Southside Johnny's better days are coming. All right. I'll, that I'll do for sure. Deal. I like it. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Good. Cool. So I just want to wish everybody out there, you know, peace and health and, you know, safety for you and everybody that you love. And, you know, it, this is weird. I mean, I, I was talking to my wife last night and, 
you know, we were thinking about the, the 89 earthquake in, in California was the first time we saw kind of like mass, like what's happening. Certainly 9-11 was another time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, the various wars that have been started where you really are shook from your foundation of the safety that you have in your life. And, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen in the world. Those of us who have kids, you know, you word for little kids, you word, you word for your adult kids who are out, you know, maybe a little farther than you can actually get to them if you needed to get to them. Absolutely. It's just a really weird time. And, and I just, you know, I know Dave, you and I as parents and as musicians and friends, you know, empathy for those who are trying to figure out these weird days out. We just, we just, we get so much love for doing the show. I know I just want to put it back out there and say, everybody, please wash your damn hands, be safe and, uh, and uh, take care of those you love. Yeah. And I will I will add what I've been saying to anybody that will listen. I'm, I'm with you. If if this whole thing I, I'm I'm forever the optimist, but I'm also too, like super practical. So do we're doing all the things here that that we believe we can do to, you know, to be safe and be safe for others th- that, that we would otherwise come in contact with and all of that. But I'm also the optimist because I have to assume that we are going to make it successfully through this, because if it doesn't matter, if we don't, then it doesn't matter anyway. Um, so with that optimism, I, uh, first of all, like if you have any travel that you might be doing later this year, like now's the time to book those hotel rooms cause they're cheap. Um, it, you know, you can cancel them if you need, if, if you know, if you don't make it, you don't make it. Um, it, you know, if you can't take the trip, whatever, uh, if we learn to wash our hands better because of this, awesome. If we learn not to go to work or go to concerts or go anywhere when we're sick because of this, even better. Like we have a systemic problem in our culture where it's just like, there's this macho thing of I can work anyway. Well, but maybe you shouldn't. So like that's, and I'm just, I I don't, I don't point fingers at that without pointing one at me first. I'm very much susceptible to that line of thinking. Uh, So I hope we, we learn that. What I hope we don't learn long-term is to avoid getting together with one another in person right now. We can't do that. Fine. That's the understandable, but I hope that when this is over, we haven't quote unquote learned that it's okay to just stay isolated. Um, Mm. And I, and I worry about that. You know, I see what happened. I was supposed to, I'm recording this from Durham. I was supposed to be in Austin today for South by Southwest. Now, it makes perfect sense to me that they canceled the the show, right? Where Austin forced them to cancel, you know, contractually and all that stuff. Uh, that was the smart move. But I really hope that this isn't the end of South by Southwest. I hope it's not the end of conferences, you know, especially in my day job businesses. We all are, you know, a lot of us work from home and it is important. And a lot of us work with people that we don't see all the time, either partners yep. or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever vendors, customers, partners, all of that stuff. And conferences and trade shows have been a fantastic opportunity to get together with people. I hope that those continue in in some way, shape or form. They, there's obviously imperfections in the way that things like that have been going on. But let's not let those imperfections kill it off completely. Well, again, you know, nine yeah. eleven and the yeah. earthquake and you know other things. The pendulum swings. It does. And, you know, yep. human beings have a have a need to be social. You know, the reason you know me as an event trade show guy saw the pendulum swing back and forth, and right. I think this applies to live music as well. I mean, just part of the experience of being a human being is just being connected. The energy you feel when you walk into a vibrant place is, is, is one of the thrilling things of being alive, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, making new friends and sharing common experiences is just, it's part of what it means to be a human being. So I, I, I am less of an optimist than you. I do think the world is, you know, working very hard to get their hands around this Mm. and, and uh, you know, well, I'm optimistic that we will get our hands around this. Like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm that that's where my optimism is, is that we will make it through this um, in a way where, you know, w- many of us are able to go on living our lives at, at, after the fact. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah that's I all. think live music will come back. I yeah. think it's going to be a, yeah. a ramp. And, you know, let us hope that the, the last point I actually did want to make is this is a great opportunity you know, we, we talk about difficult club owners and, you know, those types of relationships, right? Yes. And I'm, and I'm saying that, you know, this is a good opportunity for almost a forced narrative where we're all in this together, right? If the musicians 
aren't around, there's nothing to put into a live music club. If there's no places to play, there's no, you know, the, there's no place to perform your, your craft. So these ideas about how to make it better when we come out of this, that is another very, very good thing. Again, I don't know that any club wants a handout like, you know, we're doing a fundraiser to keep a certain club alive. I think what they want is they want to do the business that they chose to be in. So finding creative ways to do that. Right. Right. You know, is it, um, you know, I'm an event guy, so I, I'll talk to a, a, a venue and if they've been struggling, like, would it help to do a theme night, you know, to open up? Would it help to do like, you know, a beer special from this, you know, from nine to nine thirty, right? And, you know, it, what else can we do? Like I said, this one venue where I take the door, I want to raise the the rate of the door and give give some of it back again. You know, remember, the musicians have lost money as well. So, oh, yeah, I think we have to kind of recover that as well. But if we all think about rolling up our sleeves and helping everybody through this, maybe you come back with better relationships, stronger, deeper relationships. And maybe it um, maybe, it can, you know, maybe everything can come out smarter, wiser, you know, more empathetic, um, more dedicated to, you know, creating a quality music scene wherever you are, because it takes everybody. It takes it takes passionate music consumers. It takes great places to see music and it takes great music. I mean, it yep. takes all parts of that. Well, so. and it's possible, you know, it's it as consumers of anything, especially anything that is available in abundance, it's easy to take that for granted and live music. I, I think it would be very easy for us to have sat here long before this and say, people take advantage, people take not advantage. People take for granted that live music is just always there and you can go see it when you want. But tonight eh, I'm a little tired. I'm going to sit on my couch. Right. Like that, that is that is what we as performers of live music battle all the time. Right. Like it's us versus Netflix. So perhaps this will reset a little bit of that perspective and say, wait a minute, you know, we took that for granted. And then there was those th th those couple of months or whatever it turns out to be where we couldn't see live music and, you know, let's go do that. Let's make that more an intentional part of our lives again, you know, mm -hmm. and hopefully that, you know, hopefully that's one of those, see, that's my optimism kind of framing my, you know, future thoughts. So there you go. That's what I got. That's what I got. All right, bro. All right, man. Yeah. That's, that's where we're at. Folks, send in any thoughts you have, especially the, the you know, whatever you're doing or thoughts about how to do, uh, you know, any of this remote stuff or anything like that. But tell us what you're doing. Keep in touch. It's, it is important for us to communicate and be in touch with each other. So feedback at giggabpodcast.com. And then if you want to talk in our Facebook group, giggabpodcast.com slash Facebook is a great place to talk with other listeners and everything so that we can all just remember that we're all humans and, and talking with each other and communicating is important. All musicians. All musicians or fans of music. I know not everybody that listens is a musician and that that blew me away when I first learned it, but now it's it's just normal. So it's all good. Thanks for listening and stick around right at the end of this will be uh, desperate times. Bitter pill. Paul. Always be performing. That's it, man. Just got to find Always be washing your hands. Always. Always be performing has never been more true, more prescient. <laughs> <laughs>